Hey everyone. Hey folks, we're streaming. I'm not sure what this stream is going to turn out like in quality, so I'm just going to hang it down for a minute. Wait till the stream pops up on the laptop. And <laughs> make sure I don't have to go back in. So far, so good. Hang on, looks like I'm here already. Okay, so obviously I got a full screen there. That's the first time we've seen that. That wasn't supposed to happen. How is it turning out on your end, folks? We're just anybody don't know what's going on. This is a live stream, and it takes a couple of minutes for it to warm up. We stream usually every night around seven o'clock after supper, anyway, usually, and. And my name is Dana Durnford, in case anybody is asking. I just can't I can't keep messaging everybody my name all the time. I gotta remember to say it at the beginning of the streams. It's Dana Durnford, D-U-R-N-F-O-R-D. My name is Dana, D-A-N-A. I do a live stream and I read everybody's comments after. And then the next night I do a live stream and I read all the comments after. <laughs> and in between all of that, I'm listening to lectures. I'm sourcing out information, and tonight I got a doozy. Looks good, Mickey. Looks like I put on a bit of weight. The video is too widescreen. Sounds uh, fit five five. Okay, so it's okay. We have two trolls already. Okay, I'll go ahead and do the stream with this formatting, and I'll. I hate watching myself, but I'll watch myself after just to make sure. I'll go to the comments. Introducing Dana Durnford. You got it right, John. And because when I looked at it that time, it looked kind of a little bit odd. But it was kind of interesting to see the whole screen. I'm not sure what the hell I done that time. Thumbs up. All's good. Oh, God, it's too wide screen. It's a full screen. You know, I can always pop out and pop back in. Can I take a minute? How about I do that? I'm mutating. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop out, fix that, and then I'll pop right back in. Cause that that's what I thought when I looked at it originally. I was like, what the hell is that all about? Okay, I'll be right back. Hang on, folks. Just be a minute. That should jump up again. That should pop me back up there again. I'm not sure what the hell is going on now. That was odd. Sorry, folks. Let me pop this back up. Some nights are going to be like that. I have to go in after and work this all out. But we're probably going to have to stream whatever we got now. Okay, I'm going to pop out. Uh-oh. Looks like I screwed up. Am I streaming? My picture is gone. Looks like I got jacked. Looks like I might have got jacked. After work this all out. But we're probably gonna have to stream whatever we got. Okay, I gotta, I gotta pop so I am streaming. My goodness, that's confusing. Okay, here we go. Here we go again. I just want to confirm that I'm streaming, so hang on. Picture's gone. Yeah, I'm streaming. Whatever. Still looks like I got a big head on me anyway. It's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. Uh, you're good. Okay. Hi, folks. Yeah, we had a rough start here. It's good. Let's talk about this Japan. Here we go. Okay, looks good. I'm not even going to try to say hi to everybody. I just got to try to get back up to speed here. Not that I want to say hi to you, it's just that I just wasted too much time. And so let's go and start inside Fukushima Prefecture. <coughs> and so this is going to be a pretty fast, pretty hardcore. We're going to go through the next four 55 minutes non-stop. 
And would Chernobyl, it would be like Chernobyl on steroids um, if the spent fuel pools caught fire. Now they did catch fire in number four, twice, that's what they're talking about. And each reactor holds 3,450 fuel assemblies. And they're between 60 and 80 rods in each assembly. Let me run that by you again. Each reactor holds 3,450 spent fuel assemblies. March the 15th, three days after. Okay, here we go. Japan races to contain meltdown after two blasts and the third reactor losing loses cooling capacity. March the 13th, 2011. That was two days later. Former TEPCO employee. Plutonium and uranium in reactor number three had all been blown out. This was no ordinary explosion, and the government is concealing the truth. November 12, 2011. December 28, the UN agency, Reactor 3 exploded a second time, 24 hours later. Then the wind and the rain brought high levels of radiation over Tokyo, Sendai, and Nagano. This is December 28, 2000. Once again, Reactor 3 exploded a second time, 24 hours later, according to the United Nations Agency. Right, that's probably not stuff you're familiar with, is it? Radiation around Fukushima near levels where humans vomit uncontrollably and hair can be stripped from your body. March the 14th, 2011. And Tokyo nuke cloud crisis. That was the headline. And April 29, 2012, and 12, there was a real mystery, a black substance not yet measurable. Possibly 20 million becquels a kilogram of cesium, many more radioactive, many times more radioactive than local official samples, is too dangerous and must be analyzed by public institutions. That's still in the Fukushima prefecture we're on right now. We're going to work our all the way to the west coast of uh, Japan. 10 million becquels a kilogram of cesium detected in Minina Soma soil samples, May 16, 2012. I can't remember, I think that's like 20 kilometers away from Fukushima. But it's inside the 50 kilometer zone anyway. Local officials, Japan dot did not reveal plutonium-241 detection. And radiation dose was 50 times higher than the total of three plutonium isotopes that were mentioned. March 31st, 2012. That was Minina Soma, again, about 20 kilometers away from Fukushima. And they had uh, higher readings of... Plutonium-241, then they did a 238, 239, plutonium-240 combined. They haven't got that there, but they're talking about three plutonium isotopes, and that would have been all four of them, right? Uh, journal, unprecedented phenomenon from using salt water in Fukushima reactors, forming new uranium compounds able to travel long distances, like carbon buckyballs. We covered that over and over on this site. There's a peer review study down below about it. And they're not solutable in water. They can ingest uranium, plutonium, strontium, cesium, even iodine. And these little buckyballs become nuclear engines. Let's keep going here. A million becquels a kilogram of cesium detected at Fukushima school. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, that's like 20 kilometers outside of Fukushima. After it decontaminated at school, it's a million becquels. 50 becquels will cause permanent organ damage 50 becquels of radioactive material not the insignificant background radiation but the stuff we're talking about here and there's a million at a school children are 10 to 100 times more susceptible you can't get it on you without breeding it in once you ingest the particles you're guaranteed cancers you don't uh, you can't escape these hot particles in that environment okay Okay, so that was the first folder. Let's run over to the next one. So next one is, we got kind of a combination here because I got two different folders for numbers. And so you'll hear me going back and forth. you hear me going all the way from say 60 kilometers out and then you'll hear me in the next folder from 60 kilometers out again. I apologize. Government funded researchers have sounded the alarm calling for immediate monitoring. 175 billion Beckwells flow per day in just one river in one city 60 kilometers from the meltdown 175 billion becquels flow per day of hot radioactive particles 
CCM levels hit tens of billions of becquerels at the river mouth. Right, so it's it's accumulating at the mouth. Whew. This is Japan, folks, and this is why I'm saying the title of the video at night is time to eva for Japan to evacuate. Researchers, radioactivity of 6.15 million becquerels per square meter detected 60 kilometers from the meltdown. Uh, that one was October 21st, 2011. February 8, 2012, a Tokyo professor, every organism in Fukushima prefecture is contaminated with radiation. There's 1.4 million becquels a kilogram detected in warm feces, 60 kilometers from meltdown. And this one is 100 kilometers. Radioactive thorium detected 100 kilometers from Fukushima meltdown, daughter products of the uranium, October 26, 2011. So now we're out to 100 kilometers. High levels of radioactivity found extensively. Japan says air, 150 kilometers this time from Fukushima plant is as radioactive as areas close to the meltdown. So the contamination at 150 kilometers away is extraordinary. Let's keep going. 200 kilometers from the meltdown. 27,000 becquels of cesium in a kindergarten near the west coast of Japan. August 22, 2011. Uh, September 24, 2012, 240 kilometers, 230 kilometers from Fukushima plant, seems to be everywhere, radioactive black substance found, and this stuff was measuring in the millions, uh, this one was 46.625, 46,625 Beckwells of cesium, like a fungus, the black substance, we've got some really high numbers in this black substance coming up, government Session reveals 400,000 times normal radioactive xenon 133 levels in Chiba. Actual figures may be much higher. And I looked it up on the map, but I forgot to put the number there. Let me see. I forgot the number. In 240 kilometers away, Chiba. C H I B A. I'm going to keep going. Newly released NRC emails reveal radioactive technetium. technetium was detected outside of Fukushima plant 240 kilometers from the meltdown. One of the three principal radionuclides identified December 14, 2011. Let me keep going with these headlines. West of Tokyo. West of Tokyo. And Fukushima is east of Tokyo, for anybody who's not familiar. West of Tokyo, the winds blow from the prevailing, or from the west. So west of Tokyo is pretty scary stuff. 24,000 becquels a kilogram right after the Radioactive cesium in soil samples, 250 kilometers from Fukushima. Let's keep going. Cesium contamination stretched to Japan's west coast, 250 kilometers from the meltdown, 30,000 becquels a square meter in Nagagno. Absorbed radiation doses of iodine-132 was 10 times higher than iodine-131 in northern Japan after Fukushima meltdown. Plus, iodine-132 is nine times more effective at irradiating the thyroid, November the 17th, 2011. Bloomberg, hot spots spreading, government to check radiation up to 460 kilometers from the meltdown. We keep going 600 kilometers from Fukushima, high levels of cesium detected in the Saka Bay soil. Uh, 10,000 becquels a kilogram it is, blah, 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 strontium-90, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, this is huge numbers of radioactive materials. So that, that place is radioactive. Let me keep going. New contamination map, map shows cesium-137 deposited over 900 kilometers from Fukushima. Extends west to Hiroshima, November the 16th, 2011. January the 30th, 2012, Japan paper professor now reveals a high level of radioactive Material detected over a thousand kilometers from Fukushima last April. Wow. And that was in um, Nagasaki City. Radioactive substance rose five kilometers in the air on March the 14th and 15th, carried by the jet streams to U.S. and Europe. June the 22nd, 2011. 
So now I'm going to go 1,100 kilometers away. went five kilometers up in the air. Government-funded researchers have sounded the alarm, calling for more immediate monitoring. That was a 775 billion becquels in your river every day, 60 kilometers away from the meltdown. So that's everything in that folder. Let me go to the next folder. This one is Tokyo. How bad did Tokyo get it? I don't know. I got about 30 headlines to rush through. I'm not rushing. I'm just reading through it. Hi, Jill. Hi, Stetson. Let me say hi to a few people. Illusion is over. UP Gardner just passing through. Elizabeth M. And Chris Burton. Uh, David Maurer. Stephen Moyer. Jesus Pants. We as humans need to colonize in space. What are you, crazy? That's the last thing space needs is a human. We're the parasitic vultures of this planet. Hi, Lori. That's the opposite of what we got to do. We got to stop the human race from going into space. We go up into space, we're just going to kill whatever we find. We're better off <laughs> just, I hate to say it, we're better off with this planet Unless something dramatically happens and everybody all of a sudden, all of a sudden turns over a good leaf, uh, the last thing we need is this planet going out into space and destroying everything else. If we can't control our own planet, we can't save our own planet, how the hell can we manage another planet? Right? No, like I can't advocate that. NRC 100 hours after quake. And I say nothing to you, Jesus. I swore at you last week and uh, you were another guy. You know, straight to hell for that one. We hear radiation levels are up even in Tokyo. This was 100 hours after the quake. Reports that the spent fuel pools 1, 2, and 3 had started to boil. Yeah, got no idea how crazy wrong that one is. They didn't boil, it blew the hell up. Government simulation shows radioactive plume of Krypton 85 over Tokyo, March the 15th. The reactor number 3 with MOX exploded on March the 14th. Gee, you don't suppose they're related. Uh, June 5th, 2011. Tokyo drinking water on safer infants. But I thought Tokyo never got no radiation. Officials. Government distributing bottled water. Gee, why would they do that? I wonder if there was no radiation out there. March 23rd, 2011. Uh, so that was uh, 12 days after. They were panning out water. Like, it's ridiculous. They tried, anyway. Forecast shows Tokyo radiation threat on Sunday, March the 20th. March the 18th. Uh, there was a 36-hour release directly straight towards Tokyo on the second day, I believe. I was going through the emails, the fire releases today. I'll get to some of them for you, too. Air samples in Tokyo, June 18, 2011. 270 times more contaminated with cesium-137 than global weapons follow peak. So that was a high number. So what's 270 times that number in the year? Like, this stuff doesn't turn to fairy dust. Right? And you can't have any of this without uranium plutonium. Uranium got a 4.5 billion year half-life times 10. All of this is times 10. Half-lives. Right? They don't want to tell you that. I tell you all the time so you can <laughs> people can actually understand what the frig is going on here. Report. 50,000 becquels a kilogram of radioactive cesium found in the soil near Tokyo. Terrifying. The samples were from the side of the street where children walk every friggin' day. How many times have you got to walk past something like that to get a nasty friggin' Uh, you know, debilitating injury, autoimmune deficiency, cancers, respiratory Ill illnesses, losing your hair. How many times? July 12, 2011, cesium-134 and cesium-137. 50,000 Beckwells is considered terrifying. We just finished talking about millions at schoolyards after decontamination. 50 Beckwells of this kind of radiation is permanent organ damage. That's some serious issues as you try to grow up as a child. Radiation survey, 
Tokyo neighborhood cesium approaching levels found in Fukushima incinerator, Chiba's incinerator dust. 70,000 becquels a kilogram. See, they're only measuring cesium or they're only measuring iodine, right? If they measured all the radioactivity, they can't because one drowns out the other, drowns out the other in the Geiger counters. But it's, it's an indication of what, how bad it truly is. High levels of radioactive material found in Tokyo, 170,000 becquels a kilogram. And slag approaches levels found in Fukushima, May 22nd, 2011. There is no end. Tokyo, 230,000 becquels per square meter of cesium on the athlete's field in Koto, six times. As high as limits set for radiation control zones. <laughs> six times. Right, that's how evil these people actually are. It's like uh, 230,000 times. Because they're not even including the uranium, plutonium, the strontiums. Wherever there's cesium, there's 30 times more strontium. 30 friggin' times! Strontium 90 more! So 30 times 230,000 Bequels. The, the entire country is rotten, boy. Local government, 276,000 Bequels, a kilogram of radioactive cesium for soil samples near Tokyo and Kashiwa. Almost 18 million Beckwolds a square meter. Whew. You got any idea what that is? How big of a number that really is? It's frightening. 300,000 Beckwolds. Square meter of radioactive iodine. Forget about the strontium, the cesium, and... <laughs> Plutonium, uranium, americium, neptunium. 300,000 plus Beckwolds, disintegrations, decays per second, every second for a thousand years, per square meter the size of your dinner table, radioactive iodine deposited in areas. I'm saying, because it's not just iodine, okay? Iodine, uh, they're just saying iodine. It could be iodine 133, 132, 129. 131. But it has to have cesium. You have to have the strontium. Only includes the iodine 132, April 26, 2011. Japan time, cesium levels spiking. Tokyo up 300,000 becquels a square meter. Home to the world's largest drinking water reservoir of its kind. And they got hundreds of thousands of becquels no matter where they go. But the water is okay. Never went out of water. <laughs> These guys are crazy. Tokyo area soil testing finds radioactivity up to Chernobyl relocations. 919,000 Beckwells a square meter. Tokyo again, August 20th, 2011. New York Times, October 15, 2011. Government said nothing to fear in Tokyo. Then came the test result. Well... They're above 1.5 million Beckwells a square meter near a church in the capital. It's like everywhere you go, isn't it? Tokyo, high radiation levels near Tokyo linked to Fukushima. Gee, you don't suppose. Rain caused 29,250,000 Beckwells a square meter in the soil, says the government. Almost double the last government test. Just run. Just, just leave everything behind, man, and get out of there. Just get out of there. November 28, 2011. Let me keep going. Let me get through this folder. Come up and say how to cut more. Doctor finds uranium zirconium in Tokyo residents' fing fingernails. We are becoming nuclear fuel rods. October 25, 2011. Let me read that one again. Doctors find uranium and zirconium. Zirconium is the cladding for the bundles. Of rods. The rods are 12 feet long. There's usually eight in a package. They're known as assemblies also. And these rods, uh, one rod is enough to kill all the mammals on the planet after it kills all the humans. Doctors find uranium. That's 4.5 billion year half life. That's 234, 235 stuff. And zirconium. Just unimaginably toxic. Unimaginably toxic. And they're finding it in the resident's fingernails. No big surprise after all those numbers. 
A large amount of radioactive dust fell in Tokyo. Yep, November 22nd, 2011. Cesium from Fukushima plant fell all over Japan. November 26, 2011. Radioactive substances from the crippled Fukushima number one nuclear power plant has now been confirmed in all prefectures, including Yuruma, Okanagawa Prefecture, about 1,700 kilometers from the plant, according to the science ministry. 1,700 kilometers away. The ministry said it concluded the radioactive substances came from the stricken nuclear plant because in all cases, they contain cesium-134, which has a short half-life of two years. It's actually times 20. Because it breaks down another radioactive isotope, another radioactive isotope, times 10. Before March 11th, Great East Japan's earthquake, radioactive substance was barely detectable in most areas. Right? And so before the earthquake, there was literally just barely detected, and now it's in the millions. That's why I got the title of the video, it's time for Japan to evacuate. You know, three million Beckwells um, is nothing. Million Beckwells, three million Beckwells, 600,000, 300,000, 100,000. These are just normal numbers. They're not normal numbers, but they're normal numbers now for Japan. Right? You can't live there. You can't survive there. You can't have children in a few years. No one will be able to have children in Japan. Tokyo area turned out to be as contaminated as Fukushima, August 11, 2012. Kyoto confirms 40,000 microsievers per hour at Tokyo supermarket. Remember all the fuss he made at 100 sievers, microsievers? At Fukushima originally, I done those headlines a few days ago. In addition to multiple spots on the property with over 100 microsievers per hour. This is extraordinary numbers. 40,000 microsievers per hour at a Tokyo supermarket. Neutron rays measured in Tokyo. Uranium-235 found in Chiba, and they can't be detected by most Geiger counters. It's crazy. That was at 1.2 meters above the ground. So you yeah, have uranium... Uh, 235 is all around Tokyo. It came from the MOX and the plutonium. Um, yeah, and Tochingi was also um, measured uh, neutron rays. Radioactive dust reported in Tokyo after recent fog. March 21st, 2013. 4,000 beck was a kilogram of cesium in the fog. Contamination never disappears. Wow, eh? Be be where be scared of the fog. That's you know we've seen that movie. I wonder where they got that idea to. Study contamination in Tokyo suburbs three times higher than area one mile from Fukushima Daiichi. Significant contamination in Tokyo. Nuclear scientists a serious serious problem. September twenty third, two thousand one. Strontium ninety is selected hot spots in Japan in concentrations. Hang on, it finishes up this folder. Um, 827,000 Beckwells, uh, Kishiwa, a Tokyo suburb. 800, 830,000 Beckwells a kilogram per square meter. Wow, or uh, per kilogram, rather. So if you multiply that out uh, in the square meter of soil, that works out to, I can't remember, 40 uh, million Beckwells per square meter. Right, you got to watch those numbers. No, it's time 8, is it? I think it is. I think the number was times 8. So 8, 8 is 46. Yeah. I can't remember. I was doing the math the other day and all that stuff, trying to work it out properly so I can pass it on, but I forget now. And I can't look for those notes right now. Tokyo Hospital posts a sign at the entrance. We do not serve any tests for radiation exposure or treatments for irradiation. December 20th, 2011, the hospital refuses to see irradiated patients. That's friggin' scary friggin' shit, folks. NRC 100 hours after quake, we hear radiation levels are up in Tokyo, and we already covered that one. 
We already covered that one. And let me come over to the comments section. Say hi to a few people. Hi, DC. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, just passing through. Thank you. Catch your video. You're awesome. Uh, I just can't keep up with everything, unfortunately. But I'm working hard. I'm catching up, but I just I can't keep up. I do catch up, though. So that's pretty cool. It's hard, right? It's hard to do what I'm doing. Just answer all you know, the important stuff that where people need answers and to go watch everything, go read everything. I'm not complaining. I'm not saying don't do it. Do it. Don't get me wrong. That's what I'm here for. I need to know, right? I have to know. So I have to know everything. I, you know, I have to weigh everything. And so everything, I, t I have to take my time. I have to weigh it. Hi, Pam. Cat's alive. John. Sergeant. Stephen Meyer. Uh, Starlight, illusion is over. And let me see, lunar. Uh, Ken, hi Ken Smith. Uh, Reram. Okay, let me go again. Dun, 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 Thirty-two minutes, we're still rocking, and it's still rolling. I screwed up the beginning of the video. I'll put notations in there. Let me go and look at these. More than 8,000 kilometers, square kilometers in Japan. This was September the 14th, 2011. The number changes. But more than 8,000 square kilometers in Japan contaminated with cesium-137 at 30,000 becquerels a square meter. Size may increase in the future. Uh, let's keep going. Government over 30,000 square kilometers in Japan is blanketed by radioactive cesium. Now, wherever the cesium is 30 times more strontium-90. Yeah. And, and, plutonium, what? Plutonium, what? 238, 239, 240. Do I hear 241, 241? With a 24,000 year half-life. And uraniums, 234, 235. Not the insignificant radiation that is indigenous to planet Earth, but the weaponized military industrial complexes, nuclear power dis disguise radiation, okay? Chain reaction radiation, nuclear fission, 30,000 square kilometers, 30,000! Man, brutal! Radiation, uh, what have I got here? ABC also covered it. Radiation covers eight percent of japan i got some freaking news for you abc radiation is 1700 miles away high levels and all the way to there we just covered it extensively uh, ba -ba. may the 7 2012 another professor had said 20,000 square kilometers will be evacuated if japan followed the law on illegal radioactive waste 20 times larger than a no-go zone. So anybody that's inside that 30,000 kilometer zone is a death sentence. And you'll get sterilized. You're sterilizing your children. For, you know, for the sake of your species, of, your, of the human species, get out of there. Go to the West Coast and just get out of that country, I guess. Japan must be the only place in the world with 7 million becquels of radioactive isotopes in urban areas. It's incomparable, the highly radioactive blue algae on school routes. You know, hundreds of thousands of becquels where the children are walking past each day, all day. In the playgrounds, it's millions. Every time it rains, you liberate all this radioactivity back in, into the environment. You can't decontaminate, you know, yeah. like... There was 12 uh, helicopter engines on the USS Ronald Reagan. They had to take out and replace the engine because it was contaminated. The, the, the radiation will irradiate other things, and they become radiated. That's how that works. That's why Hanford is full of all that junk, because it's radiated. That's why they throw it off the side of ships in Russia, because it's irradiated. 
It's true about 70% of the Japanese territory is polluted by Fukushima radioactive material, says a Japanese professor. Tokyo contamination, contaminated with highly toxic radiation. And the experts worry about a catastrophic impact on their health. And that's why it's time for Japan to evacuate. It's really something else, man. Folks. Everyone. It's really, truly something else, okay? It's despicable that this uh, country is a prison to a handful of people. And that they, they, they are trying to cooperate. And the government is just lying. The government is not cooperating. The government is lying. It's maneuvering them. The government in Japan made 5,000 air dispersal models in the first two months and never told people to stay indoors only in the local prefecture for the first couple of days. But it still took a couple of days. What do you even tell them to do that? Japan Prime Minister studying, to study setting up alternative capital away from Tokyo. I'm trying to read too fast, I know. Japan Prime Minister to study setting up alternative capital away from Tokyo, May the 1st, 2011. They're already looking at heading. And Japan unveils plan to develop massive government backup city 300 miles west of Tokyo. Room for 200,000 staff, 50,000 uh, residents, and all the slaves. 300 miles west of Tokyo. Gee, I wonder why he would move 300 miles west of Tokyo. Anybody want to guess on that one? More than 8,000 square kilometers, the original number, then it was 20,000, now it's 30,000 square kilometers. That's, that's pretty hardcore. Uh, ba -ba, ba -ba. Oh, here's a good one for you. Yummy, forever. Iodine 129, a growing rheological risk. 15.7 million year half, life times 10. Not that that matters. Almost undetectable. Travels along with iodine 131 because uh, when you make three iodine 131 splitting, you know, the neutrons, when you're splitting the atoms, you make an iodine 129. A little monster every time you make three iodine 131. <coughs> yeah. And it concentrates in hot spots. Now, of course, wherever the iodine went, there's strontium and cesium is sure to follow. Well, it went right with it, but it's my version of a joke. Uh, the Japanese government, September 18, 2012, spent 12 million yen to censor Twitter. Uh, Why the city started to burn disaster debris, right? We covered that a little earlier. And on November 30, 2011, U.S. media only mentions report about meltdown at reactor number one. Not number two, not number three, and certainly not number four. Even though lately they covered it a bit, but then they come out with these fake pictures of the interior of unit four. I flushed that out repeatedly. You can go download the pictures on uh, below here. There's 2,136, I think it is, at TEPCO's website. They're labeled. Go look at building four. Go look at it, okay? And you tell me where it's perfect. Or, better yet, show me the pictures of TEPCO employees with cutting torches and scaffolds and rigging and they're uh, redoing the whole place. You can't do it. The, the buildings are completely polluted. Like million sieves at their gates. It's just a big hoax. It's just a big lie. It's a big fable. And hopefully everybody went back to sleep. That didn't work, obviously. We blew them out of the water anyway. Right here on Beautiful Girl by Dana Sight. Uranium-234 detected in Hawaii, Southern California, and Seattle. Yeah, I had to throw that one in there. April 9, 2011. April 9th. Right? What's a month after March 11th? April 11th. So less than a month. Uranium-234 from nuclear fission detected in Hawaii, Southern California, and Seattle where they were breathing in 10 hot particles a day. California had 1,500 radioactive atoms per cubic meter of air in that same period, right? We had one of those headlines before another night, right? That's serious numbers. So all of Western U.S., most of East Coast, Midwest, Canada covered with airborne particles 
at various altitudes, these are radioactive particles, at various altitudes in March the 20th, and the Fukushima Pluma model shows, based solely on number one reactor explosion. All the models in 2011 were based upon the number one reactor only. That's what really makes this scary. That's what really truly makes this frightening. And is that the last one? Yeah. And so, let me come back, come over and say hi to a few people. How are we doing with time? Oh, hang on. Do, do, do. Oh, 41 minutes, we're still doing okay. I've been censored heavily, no big surprise. Right, no big surprise. You know, I've taken down some really big people. I destroyed their narratives. We destroyed Woods Hole, Woods Hole. That's kind of funny, actually. We destroyed Woods Hole Oceanographic <laughs> Institution. Ken Busler, he's finished. He's done. He'll stay out there for a little while longer, but he's done. We destroyed uh, Jay Cullen from the University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. He's done. His narrative took out a deep six. We destroyed some dummy last night. What was his name? I can't keep up with it anymore. Chase uh, Dallas. Hang on. Let's run down that pad for a few seconds for a bit of fun here. Let's relive the moment. We destroyed CNN and Dr. Cham Dallas who threw the USS Ronald Reagan victims overboard. That's actually quite a good headline. And then we destroyed who else? Ba -ba -ba. Well, Fukushima destroyed us all, but we destroyed the, the, the mouthpieces as narratives. Woo! What do we got here? Fukushima, we got Dr. Brian Hanley, who said he can go down and stand up on the coastline of Fukushima and you get less than 0.0003% of insignificant normal background radiation. I read those headlines a couple of nights ago. There's a million Beckwolds here and a couple of million deer right out front. And another video Dr. Brian Dummy Henley put out there. Hanley, H-A-N-L-E-Y. Where he said he can stand up in the middle of Fukushima Prefecture in a nuclear accident and he wouldn't get any more radiation than a banana. Well, a banana is potassium-40. If I eat a banana, I off-gas potassium-40. Your body can only eat whatever amount of potassium-40 is in me. I can't increase it. It's like a regulator. It's like a thermostat. It's like a cruise control on your car where it maintains an equilibrium of potassium-40. Your body does that. You can have 9,000 barrels of potassium-40 in your drinking water legally because it's insignificant. It has nothing to do with this equation. And you, But Brian Hanley was out there, Dr. Brian Hanley, Dr. Jay Collin, Ken Buesler, out there propagating that all the time as if that has something to do with what we talk about. That's how they manipulate to you. Because 9,000 barrels sounds like a lot. But when it's potassium-40, it's, it's irrelevant. You drink it, you off-gas 9,000 barrels of potassium-40. You drink 9,000 becquels of iodine, <laughs> that's it for you. You drink 9,000 becquels of cesium-137, that's it for you. You drink 9,000 becquels of strontium-90, that's it for you. Or your child, or your pet. Or you take a bath in that, or a shower in that, you're done. You're done. And Don, Dr. Brian... Hanley is out there propagating that, oh, it's just like potassium-40, right? That's outrageous. Ken Buesler does the same thing constantly. Dr. Cham Dallas does it constantly in every one of his videos. Dr. Jay Collin from the University of Victoria does it in every Jesus speech he gives. No offense to Jesus. Does it in every speech he does. Then you have uh, Alison McFarland from the NRC. We took her down. She said there was no evidence of Fukushima radiation coming into America. Huh. Mm -hmm. I covered it extensively. 300 times here in Canada. Their own models of cesium-137 shows a 40-day dispersal over the United States from Fukushima blanketed the entire country. Everything. 137, 134. 
Yeah. Allison McFarland, the chairperson, the head of the NRC, got up in Congress a couple of weeks ago, we covered it here, and said, there is no models outside the country or in the country of radiation that might show up on our country, even in Tony amounts. It's a blatant lie. France has all the models. Spain had all the models. Switzerland had all the models. Italy had all the models. Canada even had their models. Canada had their models. And you can find one below from Health Canada. And they kept it secret. But it's below. PDF files, so be careful if your computer's a bit slow. Bum, bum, bum. And then you have CBC, CBS and Seth Doan, D-O-A-N-E from CBS, right? Done that video about Unit 4 where he's inside of Unit 4 and everything's hunky-dory. And then when he's leaving, he said, the dose I got was equal to an x-ray. Well, you get an x-ray, you're not ingesting radiation. You ingest radiation, it's game over. You're getting cancer, particularly at that place. But it's got nothing to do with an with a x-ray. You know, an x-ray, a neutron x-ray, he wouldn't be stood there. He'd be in the hospital now getting his chemotherapy. Because he's stupid like that. Blum, blum, blum. Let's keep going. Uh, we tore apart Thunderfoot's narrative. The scum of the earth. Thunderfoot. Potassium 40 boy. He's going to make us up a, a chart of the dispersals of the potassium 40 around the world. What's up with the potassium 40? Right? Not a nuclear PR firm, see? And who else do I got here? You got Elsevier, Springer and Wiley. The publishing houses. Go over to Elsevier and type in Fukushima. And you get 3,900 peer review studies locked away. Because there's nothing wrong, right? And your universities, your institutions paid for that. You paid for the institutions, the universities, for all those studies. You've been robbed by the mob. That is the system that is on its way out now anyway. It's history. It's done for. Ay, ay, ay. Let me keep going. we still got a few minutes left yet. We're up to 47 minutes. Let's keep hammering away. I got lots of folders I will never get to anyway, so let me bang away at this one. And this is probably one of the best videos I would imagine I ever put out in the sense of pure information. Bum, bum, bum. Let me see what I got here. Here we go. Bum. Radiation forecast in Japan was kept secret to avoid panic in the whole of society. They created 5,000 models in the first 52 days, around 96 models a day of the dispersal and aerosols, and they never told their population. 5,200 models and never even bothered telling their population. That paid for all of that. They told their own family. They made, they made plans to move 300 miles west where the prevailing winds come from of Tokyo, 200,000 employees and 50,000 slaves. Right, they're despicable. They're, all governments are despicable, but that one's really despicable. That's hideous. That's that's monsters. That truly is monsters. These people. Uh, yeah. Forecast map of radioactive cloud shows threat to U.S. West Coast, March the 16, 2011. The simulated forecast only accounts for a single released event, not a combination of all radioactive releases. That was the Belgium Institute and uh, March 12th explosion at the Achi number one reactor. And most of those dispersals were only based upon the number one reactor. Number three had MOX fuel. It's two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Two million times and it's completely missing. The rods were evaporated and they were also spread all over that site. They were aerosol put up in a jet stream like that when I was talking about earlier, five kilometers. There's another one here, nine kilometers up, study. University professor academic study. They had samples from the military uh, airplanes. Top U.S. official, nuclear official, raises the possibility of widespread nuclear fallout caused by spent fuel pool. March 16, 2011. That's five days later. 
And is Fukushima radiation plume highly dispersed before it hits the U.S. West Coast? The latest forecast from Norway uh, is not like, what they mean by that is it like dispersed so much that it's not an issue. This was a thick plume that kept coming and never stopped. It just never stopped. Certainly not for the first year. There was no end. It was a continuous plume. <coughs> and once again, let's cover that part. So, if, say the ocean plume in particular, I'm going to switch to it right now, because that one I was talking about was the aerosol. Say the ocean plume. Well, you got 300 to 1,000 tons a day pouring into the ocean constantly all day long, and then the next day is the same thing, and the next day is the same thing. And so, think about building a highway across the country, for instance, that's 1,000 miles wide, and you're going to go right across the country. And every day you're going to go cover so many miles, you're going to cover, say, 24 miles. Uh, how, many, how many days is it going to take you to get across the country at that rate? Right? Because the radio, radio isotopes and the particles in the atoms, they, they, if they do disperse, they don't stop producing the energy. And it's even worse. It's even worse. Because they cover the entire ocean. And the ocean can't sustain a beating of something with continuous energy, constant energy output. So in other words, if you took one of these radioactive isotopes, put it in a glass of salt water, and a glass of salt water will have 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton, which are the very basis of the food chain, and makes 50% of the oxygen on the planet in the ocean also. And so that one single isotope will kill everything, including the trillions of other creatures, microorganisms, in that glass of uh, salt water from the ocean. If you took that dead not that dead glass of salt water with that single isotope in it, he's still good to go and dump it into a liter with a billion phytoplankton, oxygen producing base of the food chain creatures into it and, and trillions and trillions of all the other creatures. Because the ocean is a super life, you will kill all of them too. If you dump that into a five gallon bucket with that single isotope, it wouldn't take too long and it'll kill all the creatures in that tow. So imagine filling the ocean up with that and your environment up with that. Imagine that being liberated and picked up. But imagine what Japan is like after I, I had read all that to you tonight. Imagine how bad Japan really truly actually is. It's from one end to the other end 300,000 to a million beckles, no matter where you're going. That's the reality, okay? All the way 1,700 miles away. It's completely 100% polluted till the end of fucking time. And that's being re liberated all the time. And so, you know, like, the, you gotta think about how if these plumes can make a 1,700 miles up, right? In the air. Then it could have went out into the ocean 1,700 miles an hour, hit the ocean, got picked up in rain clouds. But you can see how it can get the jump on getting here, right? So if the ocean currents are moving at a kilometer an hour, 24 hours a day, or a mile an hour, 24 hours a day, it's 227 days before the first plume gets here. The next day, the, 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 the plume from day two, uh, two gets there, 228 days later. And so every day, another plume is arriving. Each day, there's another plume arriving after 227 days. And yeah, they're dispersed. They're still extraordinarily dangerous for hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and millions and even billions of years, depending on the isotopes. And you can't have one without the other. And so the urgency is real. The message is real. This is not a joke. This is the real deal. That's why we're here every friggin' night that we can possibly get here. That's why I'm at this all day, every day anyway. You can't escape it in Japan, period. North America got hammered. Canada got hammered. The Pacific Rim countries are being hammered. And I never ever covered them. And I apologize to these people. I have to get my act together and learn to cover all of them. It's not just us, right? But we're the English population. But we still need to include them in the tallies and the stats. And I got, you know, I got to wrap my mind around that at some point and remember to always do that. Um, let me see if I got one more for you. Let's see if I got one more for you. 
Oh, he's got one more. Jesus, uh, we're 60 now. We're not going to read you all them. I'm just trying to find some more Japan. These are all over Canada and the United States uh, models. Yeah, that's where I can't even touch that one right now because I got all the models. There's all videos. But let me come down and touch reactor 1, 2, and 3 for another 2 minutes. Then I'll come say hi and goodbye to everybody. Let me cover these couple of Cesium in the sea is likely to return to Japan in 20 to 30 years. Let me read that again. That was September the 15th, 2011. And Cesium in the sea is likely to return to Japan in 20 or 30 years. As if they need any more. Keep it over there. Keep it over there, buddy. Keep it over there. CCM and strontium. Keep it over there. <laughs> I'm sure a few people are howling at me now. Dana. Okay, here's the last one. Fireman dies after working in Fukushima. Vomited blood frequently and finally dies of renal failure. November 13, 2011. And one more. I know I lied. IAEA today admitted there is no such thing as safe level of radiation, allowable radiation standards based on benefit, not safety. There is no benefit to man-made radioactive isotopes. There's a benefit to the indigenous, insignificant, normal background radiation because that's how life evolved. Whether you like to believe that or not, but that's how we came about through the mutations, to insignificant, normal, indigenous, harmless, background radiation that everything on the planet is acclimated to, but nothing on the planet can be acclimated to cesium, to strontiums, to the uraniums, to the plutoniums, to the iodines, or to any of the other hideous, inconceivable, monstrous radioactive isotopes that are created only for one purpose, to make directed energy weapons, right? The isotopes for making power were used 50 years ago and they were fine. And all the new isotopes that we create, particularly with the MOX fuel from unit number three, that's all about making directed energy weapons. That's all about making lasers. That's, you can't have these high-powered weapons without these concoctions of isotopes. And they don't know what kind of a laser weapon they can come up with until they experiment with all kinds of concoctions, plutonium, uranium, and that will lead to the demise of the entire freaking planet. Because we can't contain it. We should never be at it. And it's not just Japan, it's every country out there is at this. It's not a revolution, it's the end of evolution. Because you sterilize the entire biosphere and ecosphere, the oceans, you're sterilizing everything out there, minimum, and you're, uh, you're uh, giving everybody cancers. And a lot of these cancers won't show up for five or six years, seven or eight years. But a lot of it's going to show up immediately. Like there was 20,000 extra deaths in the United States right away. There was a huge increase for the 14 weeks after the original releases. And we've had none but lies. Most of the models were based upon just a single release from Unit 1 when it detonated. And those models are terrifying. What about the models are the consistent, the constant, and the enormous amounts that are released every single day for over a thousand days or put into the model, you couldn't see the planet Earth. And you could never see your way out of it. And so, like, if we don't get our act together and deal with it, it's going to deal with us. And it's going to deal with them. They're killing their own loved ones. Right? The idiots, the stupidest people on the planet that we got in charge, the losers, the traitors, the inbreeds, the cowards, do they really think that this is not going to affect them, their children, their friends, their families, their spouses, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their nephews, their nieces? Do they? The people they work with? Do they really think this is not going to affect them too? Does Japan really think that they got a future there? Because they don't. How can they? They're living in the most radioactive thing imaginable. We've never seen this before. There is no precedence for that. This is Mox fuel we're talking about. This is three melted, 100% meltdowns. Not only that, all the fuel pools are missing in unit one and two, uh, three. Hundreds of thousands of rods. A single rod is enough to kill all the mammals on the planet after it kills all the humans. 
And so we're up to 59 minutes. I'll come over and say goodnight to everybody. That was a pretty good stream. Except for the beginning of it. I'll put a notation. I'll put in the video so people don't get stuck with that. Um, okay, Sergeant. Good night. Good night, everybody. Uh, Pitman. David Maurer. Lori. Penny. DC. Delusion is over. Lyrinderell. Matt. Nelson. Uh, Toxic. Sergeant. Starlight. It's a sobering night, isn't it? Steve. Uh, uh, Kate. Dana tossed that bike. I did so. Stephen Meyer. Yeah, England's, uh, Sellafield, England's got 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into the ocean, folks. And, hi, Penny here, David Moore, uh, Jill, just passing through, Cats Alive, Ken, Reram, everyone needs shoes, Dana, yeah, want to be live 24. There you go, folks. Basic data. Toxic. All right, pretty well. This thing is moving too fast again on me. Gary. Gary. G A R. Miller. Stetson. Hey, buddy. And I don't know. Now your dog locked himself in the shitter and shit. Had to clean it up. That's messed up shit. That's some messed up shit, bud. Aviator, hey bud. And I guess that's it for tonight, folks. John Towson, thank you, John. And let me see if I can say hi to you. Good boy. Pam. Yeah, it's pretty hard to keep up with it all, isn't it? Lori again. John Townsend. Thorup. Thorup T. Oh, I lost you. I always like doing that, though. Trying to find a few extra people. T I H R U P is a hard one to pronounce, eh? Thorup. Thorup. And everybody else, Chris Barton, you're a Navy vet. Yeah, the, the USS Ronald Reagan got thrown overboard, didn't they? And so there you go. That was a decent stream. It's a lot of brutal information. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. We got sometimes we got to come out with the brutal facts. Japan needs our help. The the victims in Japan. The children that are playing in a million beckles every day need our help. All right? Their country has turned their back on them and are murdering them now. They have an internet blackout in Japan since October 25th, 2013, when they had a 7.4 earthquake right outside of Fukushima. And there's been an internet blackout ever since. Millions of Facebook posts are missing every day. Millions of Twitters are missing every day. Tens of thousands of YouTube videos are missing every day. Instagram is missing every day from Japan. There's a couple trickling out, trickling out, but we can't even prove they're from Japan. And they're insignificant anyway, because they don't mention nothing worth uh, looking at. And Japan is in a lot of trouble. The victims in Japan, there's a couple of hundred million of them there. And they're going to have to take back their country. We have to support them. Right? Somebody has to stand for them. Nobody else is. And so, you know, we've got to hold them close to our hearts and our minds that they didn't do anything wrong, right? This was the military industrial complex. This was General Electric. This was the monster machine that knows no limits and refuses to even consider the, the other option of not murdering the entire planet. And we have to, you know, we have to keep pushing back, and that's what we do. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. And um, that's the best I can do, right? We'll catch you folks tomorrow night.